Hello and welcome back to another video in the scene editor for Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Today we're going to talk about nav mesh and I'm going to show you how you can do it manually and how you auto generate it and also how you can use it to set the AI to climb a ladder. Now first there is a little update on the status of Kingdoms of Arda. We are currently working on a build that will allow us to use custom battles so we can balance the troops and uh, hopefully also test some of the down maps. I'm also working on a Gwendorian castle map so we can test all the siege related stuff. In the coming videos I will also talk about how you import your height maps and material maps and in a later video I will also show you how you put spawn points for custom battles. And after that we will have a video about how you transfer your map into custom battles. When all that is done I will make another video about how you create a, a siege map. There's uh, quite a lot of uh, things to uh, keep in mind before you uh, start doing that. So uh, there are probably be, uh, a lot of episodes. As you can see I have uh, decided to make our little map uh, for this test uh, a little more detailed uh, compared to the last video. Let's get started. Now if you don't know what a nav mesh is, it is uh, a navigation mesh and uh, some people also call it uh, an AI grid and it basically tells you uh, or rather uh, the bots where they should walk and where they shouldn't walk. So just to give a, a quick example maybe we uh, have this river and it's uh, too deep so uh, that's probably not the case in uh, this map but if it was uh, too deep and the AI would simply uh, go into the water and drown. That would be uh, a problem I would say. Another quick thing about uh, the navigation mesh is, uh, uh, is that it uh, helps the AI navigate so it doesn't walk through walls. That's basically the, the essence of uh, an av mesh. And uh, the more detailed your nav mesh is, um, I mean, the, the better it is, the better the AI will also perform. So let's get into it. Before you uh, start adding a nav mesh, I recommend that you actually complete your map. Now this is just a test map, so it's not very important. But I'm going to show you how you do the uh, nav mesh manually and then I'm going to show you how you auto generate it. Now in order to add a nav mesh you hit the navigation mesh and you just click on it. You can see there's uh, all sorts of different settings. The most important thing is that you can select the vertex, edge and face. You can also use shortcuts so one, two and three. It's a uh, I'm a lot faster to do that than uh, going up here and click. You can select all your your entire nav mesh if you if that's needed. And there's also some auto generate parameters. I'm not going to go into that. Yeah. You can play around with it if you want. I think the default one is okay, but uh, I always recommend that people do their own nav mesh uh, manually. It just gives a, a far better result. Now if you want to do it manually this is the most important stuff. Uh, generating tools and uh, debugging tools. If you have uh, made an auto generated one you will use the debugger tools a lot because there are a ton of mistakes but I will show you that when we get to it. So. When you start to create your nav mesh, you can uh, 
simply go into the navigation mesh or you could uh, show navigation mesh uh, and you can see there's actually not uh, one right now so let's try and, and create one so you hit the create new face and it actually creates a face where the camera is so if we hit one you can select the vertexes vertices I think and if you press uh, T like for entities you can actually move it around and uh, go down and so forth if you click two it's the edges so you can move the the edge if that's the quickest way to do it and of course uh, three you hit uh, the entire face and you can lower it and uh, move it around so let's try and make this fit better to the road Something to keep in mind when you do these things is that you should uh, consider what makes uh, sense. So for a bridge like this you would uh, just want uh, one line of uh, faces instead of uh, say you, you split this up uh, just a minor note now this looks pretty good the important thing about a nav mesh is that it is close to the ground if it's too uh, high up in the air the ai will actually not uh, register the uh, nav mesh and they will act uh, pretty weird i have uh, seen this in a custom battle that i was working on where i raced the entire auto generated nav mesh because it uh, was clipping with the terrain some places and uh, I hadn't seen that uh, some of them were too far away from the ground and that resulted in some weird um, AI behavior now let's continue and uh, I will show you how you can edit your uh, manually created nav mesh and how you expand it and so forth now you only want it to be in your playable area so when you work on that I would recommend that you turn on your borders because there's no reason to uh, have nav mesh outside of the border because that would mean the AI would actually uh, might uh, trace you down if you leave the area and we don't want that so we have uh, enabled our borders so we can see them and now I'm going to click 2 and uh, I'm going to select an edge and sort of extrude the next one and you can see that it's another face and we do another one now a lot of people try to get rid of uh, spending too much time creating a nav mesh but it's actually one of the most important parts of uh, creating a map and um, it's, it's uh, extremely time consuming I would say it's around uh, 60 to 70 percent of the time you should spend on your nav mesh and um, for battle range you can just uh, use the auto generated one to um, get a quick uh, base but it uh, needs quite a lot of uh, editing however for uh, villages and uh, castles um, you should do it manually otherwise it's just going to be yeah it's just not going to work very well all right i'll show you the next feature so uh, remember to click one or select the vertex and you can uh, um, 
select three or four uh, of these vertexes and you use the fill now it's clipping with the terrain so that's actually a problem but you can um, see that it's making uh, another face here now we don't want it to clip with the terrain because that could actually mean that the AI wouldn't register the nav mesh so the problem here is that there's a, a little bump so I'm going to show you the next little uh, method which is uh, subdivide so you select an edge and hit subdivide so it splits the edge and now there's a new vertex here that you can uh, raise and lower so already by now you can probably uh, tell that it will take uh, a lot of time to actually create a, an app mesh for all this of course you can hold down control and um, select several uh, edges or vertexes at uh, the same time you just need to keep in mind that the terrain should follow all right so let's say we have created a actually let's just do it just to show you what I mean so we do something like this and let's move this one over here the shape doesn't have to be a, a square you can also have um, triangles so if you hit one and select two you can connect them and now it's uh, split in two so we have two uh, triangles instead now it doesn't have to be this small of course so you can just create uh, larger ones the important part is actually just that it's not clipping with the terrain and um, again the better you make this the better the AI will behave um, I think it takes a little time to get the right flow for doing this uh, fast but it's gonna take a lot of hours uh, I'm just going to show you how you use the fill again but with uh, 4 selected and you can also do it uh, for larger areas of course so it's a, a useful way to fill in any gaps you might have uh, left out on purpose or by accident now when you create your nav mesh you might get uh, a few bug reports down here of course this is uh, far from done but if we have used a uh, auto generated one there would be a ton of bugs and you would use the debugging tool to get rid of some of them another thing you can do and you can do this for your map uh, whenever is you click on the check for problems and uh, right now it says uh, no problems found but uh, there could be some problems with your nav mesh or uh, if you're working on a, on a siege map perhaps you have to put your middle position between the outer gate and the inner gate and uh, it will uh, actually give you a little uh, bug down there uh, some of them are actually not a problem uh, per se I mean it may not uh, make you crash or anything it's just uh, a little reminder from the editor all right so uh, now we have created uh, a minor nav mesh here and uh, let's try and um, do the ladder I talked about and uh, of course this is just for uh, testing so let's say uh, we have a tower instead of uh, a shrine here and of course you should uh, add a stair if uh, you want anyone to go up there and uh, 
if you want the AI to go out there you need to put an affirmation on the stair and connect it to the wall of course now let's try and see if we can find a ladder now the important part when you look for ladders and uh, so forth is that you find the proper one so you need to find the one there is uh, tall enough and I actually think the civilian ladders are too too small let's try and see if we can find uh, the right size I'm gonna go into how you make it function better later in another video so this is just for showing you the nav mesh features first off we should lower our wall a little and you can sort of see the height of the people up here so it should match pretty decent there um, and of course right now our ladder is uh, below the ground when it's not uh, raised so there's uh, some editing you would have to do if you're working on that to go to scene and you find the ladder you open up and you can actually find uh, the specific things and move it around but uh, as I said I will cover that in a later, vi later video we go back to the nav mesh and we uh, hit to on this edge and extrude and we do something like that and this is just a very uh, quick uh, test so you can see how it sort of works when we before I do this I will just uh, talk a little bit about uh, villages and castles when you're making an av mesh for those things you should uh, look at the face and uh, there are IDs for faces so within a castle it's one and it's also the same for villages but uh, two should be the path uh, or the road within the village I think it's only for the civilian level however so it's not needed for a castle map per se and uh, when we get to the castle siege uh, stuff I will cover some of the other numbers there are quite a few and uh, there are still not any good uh, documentation so a lot of it is uh, what we can see uh, tail worlds have done in their maps and we sort of uh, interpret what it does and uh, how useful or needed it is anyway so when you have uh, placed a ladder you might think uh, well the AI I think it works uh, right now but they don't so you would have to need uh, to create another face and it should be one face for the entire ladder uh, to create the best sort of AI behavior so there are basically two elements to this ladder but this is the first and most important one so we have a, a face that sort of uh, follows the ladder and it doesn't have to be 100% uh, perfect but uh, the more perfect it is the better the AI will behave of course so we have reached the top and we should uh, select the face between the top here it looks a little weird here and, uh, we create another one and this is uh, the second uh, aspect of the ladder it is the little climb over the the wall here oh, I think I selected the, the wrong one yeah keep that in mind when you try to edit the nav mesh sometimes it selects uh, things that you didn't think it would alright so we continue our little nav mesh 
this is just for the wall it has nothing to do with uh, the ladder so something like that and you will see that creating uh, stuff like this on walls and so forth is actually quite easy so just something like this again it doesn't have to be perfect all right now I'm going to show you the most important part of this because right now the AI can go both uh, go up and down and we don't want that because we don't want the defenders to crawl down the ladders and I don't know I actually don't know why it probably something uh, tailwheels decided anyway you click on the face of the, uh, on the ladder and uh, I've only seen it done for the ladder and not the, the other way and uh, when you've done that you're gonna go to direction type and forward only now you can see it's uh, creating an arrow and uh, the AI knows it's only supposed to go up and not down and uh, if you're done it the other way it's probably pointing down so I would recommend you fix it so it's important that you start from the bottom and go up and not from the wall and go down and you don't want it to uh, you want uh, don't want it uh, applied to the next face uh, another important thing about this is that it needs to be connected to uh, some more faces. So uh, you can't do this for, uh, let's say we created another one and only did it on the ladder. Uh, it's not, it shouldn't uh, work. You need to connect it to, to something. Alright. So that's uh, basically how you do nav mesh uh, manually and it takes a, li a little time as you can see now I'm going to show you how you auto generate it and it's actually quite simple you can change a lot of things with the uh, parameters of course but uh, um, I haven't really looked into it it seems uh, a little complicated but feel free to uh, edit it and share whatever you discover. You, when you create your auto generated uh, nav mesh, it will remove our manually placed one. So perhaps we should save first. And I recommend you do that quite a lot because the editor is unstable and crashes from time to time. So let's hit auto generate, and you can see it will give you a little message before you do it we say yes and depending on your map and how detailed it is it will take a, a little moment before it's actually done all right so now it has generated a nav mesh for us and uh, you can probably see some uh, things that are wrong compared to what I said uh, before uh, first off there are a ton of unnecessary faces that will make the AI uh, go uh, back and forth uh, the entire time because it doesn't it has to calculate uh, the shortest uh, route uh, and when there's uh, so many it's probably gonna act weird uh, especially for our little bridge you can actually see it's also creating an av mesh uh, beneath the bridge so the AI would wouldn't really understand uh, where it's uh, supposed to go or anything and it's also trying to cross the river instead of the bridge so the bridge doesn't really have a purpose here other than that you can see that and it does that uh, a lot which is why I don't like it it uh, sort of stretches some uh, faces. I mean, you can actually see there's a face right here and it's super tiny, um, very bad actually. Uh, and you can also see it actually generated uh, an have mesh uh, on this roof, but you can actually uh, get to the roof and um, I wouldn't recommend that either. Uh, 
You can also see that it has generated an animation on the rocks and that is fine in some cases like here perhaps where the AI won't get stuck but um, I'm pretty sure it would get stuck trying to climb up here um, at least some of the units would so that's something I wouldn't recommend and um, when you have rocks in your map and you don't want the player to climb on top and shoot down on the on the enemy you should uh, probably use barriers to block them from doing that uh, I think it was in video 2 or 3 3 I think where I show you how you add uh, barriers and you can do that for both the player uh, and the uh, AI or just the AI all right so now we have this terrible uh, generated uh, nav mesh uh, again very stretched here and you want to edit that and I showed you the methods so you can subdivide which would make this huge one uh, a little smaller you can raise them and lower them of course and you should use the debugging tool so let's try first and see if there's any problems yeah I expected that so some of them are inverted uh, which means it's uh, basically um, not working it's uh, a face so you would uh, select inverted faces let's try and see and everywhere there is a zero it's uh, actually where it's like that now you could try and uh, find each one and edit it but um, personally I just delete them like that very easy you can also do a lot of other things let's say we don't want uh, the AI to climb this rock so you could either select one of these and just drag and drop and uh, delete you can sort of see that it's improving the nav mesh around the rock you can also select uh, the edges can be a little hard sometimes to actually see which uh, areas you have selected so something like that and you can see there's uh, a lot of these uh, vertices left so you would have to remove unused vertices like that and they're gone if you do this a lot uh, make sure to save before you hit that because uh, it can make you crash if you have like 2000 of these dots uh, another problem with the auto generated one is that the file size of the nav mesh is larger than necessary uh, it's not a, a very huge file but um, if you're working on a mod you might want to to know that and of course we can also select faces or you can hit three if you hit three it will actually show up like this and again it uh, leaves the vertices so it's only if you have the vertex selected yet that you can actually delete them in the first go but it can be a little hard to see where it's uh, actually going to disappear so just uh, some quick notes about uh, the auto generated one and you can also try and find a path by selecting two and uh, so forth uh, I would I wouldn't re really recommend to test a lot around with these because uh, some of them will actually make you crash um, one thing you could do you could find tight faces and these are extremely small faces as you can see and there are a ton of them especially over here at uh, our rocks um, so again 
you could try and uh, and edit each one, but uh, I recommend that you just delete them, and then you would have to remove the vertices. Yeah. All right. I think that's uh, about it for today. I will try and uh, move on to the next video about how you import your height map and material maps. Um, if that's not going to work out, I'm probably just going to go into how you add spawn points for your map so you can uh, test it in uh, custom battles. Thanks for watching and uh, remember to like and subscribe. Bye.